Attention gun owners and anyone who's divorcing someone who owns a gun. Did you know that there is a federal law that says that if there is a protective order or restraining order against you for a domestic violence situation, that you can be criminally prosecuted by the Department of Justice just for possessing a gun. And that protective order doesn't even have to tell you that you're not allowed to possess a gun. It's automatic. Once the protective order goes into place, the law is automatically there and ignorance of the law is no excuse. My name is Laura Hurd and I'm an attorney who's practiced family law in San Antonio, Texas since 1987. And family law attorneys have been aware of this for quite some time that a restraining order could in fact restrict a person's right to own a firearm. And so it is something that you really need to watch and look at the language of that order if one is about to be entered against you. This federal law that was upheld recently in the case of the United States Supreme Court versus Rahimi, that case came about because of an incident that occurred in 2020 the United States Supreme Court just handed down the decision June 21st, 2024. Back in 2020, Mr. Rahimi had an argument with his then girlfriend. And when he was arguing with her, she was trying to get out of the car and get away from him. He was trying to keep her there and he pushed her into his car and she hit her head on the dashboard. That's all it takes to get a protective order for domestic violence because she was an intimate partner. You don't have to be married to someone to get a protective order, but she was an intimate partner as a girlfriend and you don't have to have actual physical harm that lasts or causes a scar or anything like that. It can just be something that causes pain. Temporary pain is considered bodily injury. So that in itself would have gotten him the protective order. But to make matters worse, he got out his gun and started shooting at a bystander who witnessed the whole thing. So he definitely had a protective order put against him for this incident in 2020. But in 2022, he was also suspected of being involved in several shootings, five different shootings that took place over the course of two months in the Arlington, Texas area. And so there was enough evidence that the police were able to get a search warrant to search his residence. And when they searched it, they found that he had a rifle and a pistol in his residence. Because it's in his residence, it's in his control, it's in his possession. And that was a violation of the federal law. And so then they had him on a criminal charge um, for violating the federal law. He challenged that saying it was a violation of his second amendment right to bear arms. And the Bill of Rights says you have a right to keep and bear arms. And keeping would mean possessing. And he said, this is an absolute right that, that the federal government should not have the right to take away. It would be unconstitutional to deny me that right. This rule was um, brought into question because of another case that happened in 2022. Uh, in 2022, the United States Supreme Court decided a case. And um, in that case, the restriction on the law had to be virtually the same restriction as what the forefathers had in mind when they created the law. So the United States Supreme Court in the case of U.S. versus Bruin said in order to restrict someone's constitutional rights, you had to show that when the law was enacted, that there was traditionally or historically a similar restriction on that law. And so Mr. Rahimi was trying to say that because in the time when they created the Second Amendment, we didn't even have the same kind of firearms. So they couldn't have imagined what kind of firearms we were talking about in our federal law today. And domestic violence wasn't even really a crime back then. So there was nothing that prohibited you from owning a firearm or possessing a firearm in cases of domestic violence back when they created the Second Amendment. United States Supreme Court said that's okay. It doesn't have to be exactly the same restriction as long as it's a similar or analogous restriction. And while Bruin brought into question 
just exactly how much does the restriction have to compare to what was already in place when the law was created. The Rahimi decision said it, it's okay if it's different as long as it's similar. And they quoted that the founding fathers at the time of the Second Amendment, quote, included regulations to stop individuals who threaten physical harm to others from misusing firearms. And this law today is also misusing firearms in a dangerous situation. The Rehaimi decision didn't change the federal law that was already in place. It just reaffirmed it, but it also is a federal law that applies everywhere in the United States. It is a case that came out of Texas, but it applies to the entire country. One thing I'd like to point out that is there are some things that are kind of misleading that are coming out even in the major news outlets, like the headline that says that Rahimi says that you can't own a firearm in a domestic violence situation. That's simply not true. There's a difference between owning and possessing. You can own it, you just can't possess it. So if you own one already, you have somebody hold it for you, then they are keeping it out of your control and out of your possession. That's okay. When the temporary restraining order or the protective order is lifted and no longer in effect, then you can have your firearm back. But as long as it's in effect, if that person is holding it for you and gives it back to you, then they violated the federal law and they can be prosecuted. So it's important to know that if your restraining order says anything about domestic violence or prohibits you from threatening bodily injury or threatening unlawful action against a person or against the child of an intimate partner, then that is something that's gonna trigger this law that is in effect and you need to not agree to that if it's something that uh, comes up in your divorce case unless they can prove that it's going to be true.